Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. Modern society faces a new kind of pandemic, one not caused by biological pathogens but by a collection of dangerous ideas. These idea pathogens threaten to erode reason, freedom, and intellectual diversity. Spawned on university campuses, they spread into politics, business, and culture, challenging the foundations of rational thought and discourse. Author Gad Saad contends that this pandemic of disordered thinking stems from a tendency to let emotions override reason. Institutions that should be committed to truth-seeking, such as universities, are increasingly fostering ideologies that reject science and intellectual freedom in favor of conformist thinking. The consequences are profound, impacting every facet of society. In this summary, you'll explore how these destructive ideas take root, why they pose a grave danger to free inquiry and the steps necessary to reclaim reason and critical thinking in an era dominated by intellectual conformity. Let's begin. Defending truth and freedom what drives a person to stand against the tides of societal conformity. Chapter 1 Defending Truth and Freedom For Gad Saad, it's a deep commitment to freedom and truth. His early life in war-torn Lebanon exposed him to the dangers of tribalism and identity politics, teaching him how these forces can curb reason and dehumanize individuals. This experience laid the groundwork for his lifelong resistance to ideological conformity and defined his academic career. Unlike many who confine themselves to a single niche, Saad embraces intellectual curiosity, exploring varied fields and challenging norms. His belief in the pursuit of truth compels him to engage openly with the public, despite the risks of defying academic expectations. Saad posits that universities, which should foster such intellectual exploration, have instead become breeding grounds for ideologies that resist reason. He identifies these institutions as epicenters for movements like postmodernism and radical feminism, which stray from scientific rigor and objective thinking. He describes these ideologies as mind viruses that create environments where free inquiry is stifled and conformity is rewarded. Saad sees this issue as part of a broader cultural struggle in the West. The battle between reason, freedom, and open discourse versus the rise of political correctness, identity politics, and thought policing. He calls this conflict the death of the West by a thousand cuts, as various forces slowly erode the principles of intellectual freedom and truth. To counter this decline, Saad argues for a return to critical thinking rooted in science and logic. If we renew our focus, he believes, there is still hope for reclaiming intellectual freedom and resisting the spread of the so-called ideological parasites. Chapter 2 how Emotions Undermine Rational Decision-Making in Society Have you ever wondered why people struggle to balance reason and emotion in their decisions? It's tempting to view things in binary terms, such as thinking versus feeling, but this oversimplification can lead to flawed decisions. In reality, humans are both thinkers and feelers, and the key is knowing when to engage either the cognitive or emotional part of the brain. Some choices, like investing in a mutual fund, call for careful thought, while impulse buys rely more on feelings. The real issue arises when we apply the wrong type of processing, using emotions for decisions that demand logic. This tendency to let emotions take the lead has infiltrated many areas, including education and politics. Universities, once devoted to the pursuit of truth, are increasingly focused on protecting feelings. The emphasis on avoiding offense often comes at the expense of fact-based discourse. The result is a cultural climate where criticism, even when rooted in evidence, is labeled as hate speech. In consumer behavior, there's a clear distinction between products that engage our emotions and those that require more analytical thinking. Perfume ads appeal to our senses and fantasies, while a mutual fund advertisement targets logical, fact-based decision-making. Similarly, when choosing a political candidate, it should be a matter of weighing policies, not reacting to personal dislikes. This shift toward emotional decision-making becomes most problematic when facts are overshadowed by the need to protect feelings. 
public discourse has seen reason take a back seat to emotional outrage, leading to scenarios where discussions on topics like gender differences in academia are met with hostility rather than open debate. The consequence? An environment where suppressing the truth is justified in the name of inclusivity. This limits intellectual freedom and creates a world where the pursuit of knowledge is held back by the fear of causing emotional distress. Chapter 3, Free Speech as the Foundation of a Free Society What does it mean to live in a truly free society? At its core, it's the ability to express any idea, no matter how contentious, without fear of suppression. The foundation of a liberal and modern society rests on freedom of speech and thought. This open exchange of ideas, tested by reason and science, has driven the progress of Western civilization. Without the liberty to challenge prevailing notions, society risks losing its grasp on truth. Today, social media companies wield enormous power over public discourse. They act as gatekeepers, deciding which voices can be heard and which are silenced. Right-leaning perspectives are often suppressed through demonetization, bans, and algorithmic biases. The influence of these companies extends far beyond traditional media, prompting calls for regulation to prevent them from becoming unchecked arbiters of free expression. In academic institutions, the climate of self-censorship presents a troubling obstacle. Students and professors face pressure to conform to progressive ideologies or risk backlash. Many remain silent to protect their careers, which diminishes the diversity of thought that universities are meant to foster. This fear of reprisal is more than an inconvenience. It directly threatens the free exchange of ideas that's essential for intellectual growth. Some claim to support free speech, but demand limitations to avoid offending particular groups. This mindset not only undermines the essence of free expression, but creates a slippery slope where only acceptable viewpoints are permitted. True freedom must include even the most disagreeable ideas. Otherwise, it becomes a hollow concept. Scientific inquiry faces a similar challenge. The push for identity politics in science suggests that researchers' backgrounds should inform how evidence is interpreted. This undermines the core of the scientific method, which seeks universal truths regardless of cultural or ideological influences. A society that strays from evidence-based research risks losing its most powerful tool for understanding the world. Only by upholding these principles can a society remain truly free and committed to truth. Chapter 4, When Ideology Replaces Reality and Rejects Scientific Truths When ideology replaces reality and rejects scientific truths what happens when ideology overrides reality? Many modern movements, especially those prominent in academic circles, have adopted views that reject established scientific truths in favor of personal or political beliefs. These include postmodernism, social constructivism, radical feminism, and certain facets of transgender activism. The result, Gard argues, is an erosion of reason as objective facts give way to subjective narratives. For instance, transgender activism sometimes denies the biological reality of sex. It says that gender identity can fluctuate daily, leading to legal changes where misgendering is treated as a hate crime. A common theme among these movements is the desire to liberate people from reality. One striking example is the blank slate theory, which claims that human characteristics are formed solely by environment, totally ignoring the roles of biology or heredity. This perspective suggests that anyone could become the next Lionel Messi or Albert Einstein through proper conditioning, ignoring natural talents or limitations. Postmodernism, with its denial of objective truth, contributes significantly to this mindset. Scholars within this field often use convoluted, nearly incomprehensible language, creating the illusion of depth where there may be none. One such example was an academic debate where simple, observable truths, like the fact that only women can bear children, were dismissed with absurd rebuttals. Postmodernist scholars also argue that concepts such as East and West are merely arbitrary labels. 
In academia, this rejection of objectivity was further shown in the Grievance Studies Project, which exposed a willingness to accept fraudulent research if it aligns with certain ideologies. Hoax papers, including one linking human anatomy to climate change, were published in respected journals, revealing how ideology can trump intellectual rigor. And transgender activism has illustrated what some call the tyranny of the minority. Society and legislation are often pressured to align with claims that contradict biological facts, such as the notion that biological males can become pregnant. These shifts, aiming for inclusivity, raise concerns about the impact of bending reality to suit ideology. Chapter 5 How Victimhood Culture Stifles Free Speech on Campuses What happens when a culture prioritizes feelings over facts, and victimhood becomes a badge of honor? On many college campuses, a small but vocal group of activists, often referred to as social justice warriors or SJWs, dominate the narrative. These individuals, supported by some faculty and administrators, push a climate of extreme political correctness. Here, being part of an oppressed group grants social standing, resulting in a hierarchy of victimhood. As a result, the pursuit of knowledge takes a back seat to managing grievances and perceived slights. This atmosphere has led to the establishment of safe spaces where opposing views are silenced. Universities, traditionally places for robust debate, have turned into echo chambers. The combination of students claiming that differing opinions are a form of violence and professors leaning toward one ideology has created an environment where intellectual growth is stifled. Without exposure to diverse perspectives, students are ill-equipped to think critically and handle disagreement. Adding to this is the widespread use of trigger warnings. Intended to shield students from distressing content, these warnings can infantilize them and promote emotional fragility. Instead of confronting challenges, students are taught to avoid them. This approach contradicts therapeutic methods that advocate exposure to build resilience. By shielding students from discomfort, institutions risk producing individuals who struggle to deal with the complexities of real life. An underlying force in this trend is the concept of victimhood homeostasis. People, especially on campuses, seek to maintain a sense of victimhood, sometimes by exaggerating grievances or expanding definitions of harm. When real injustices are scarce, new forms of victimhood are created, feeding a perpetual cycle. In many cases, self-identified progressives engage in a form of self-punishment, seeking to atone for their perceived privileges. This self-flagellation, often seen in those with advantages, acts as a new form of moral signaling where worth is measured by personal guilt and ideological purity. This approach dismisses reason and discourages honest debate, turning progressive ideology into a strict moral code. Chapter 6 – The Dangers of Denying Scientific Facts for Comfort In 1998, a study falsely claimed a link between the MMR vaccine and autism. Though later retracted, it ignited an anti-vaccine movement led by celebrities who found it easier to blame vaccines for autism than accept that their children might have a genetic predisposition. This refusal to accept established science shows a broader human tendency, the denial of uncomfortable truths. People often create alternate realities, dismissing scientific consensus for the comfort of personal beliefs. This is described as ostrich parasitic syndrome, where facts as obvious as gravity are rejected in favor of comforting illusions. Historically, this denialism has had severe consequences. In the Soviet Union, Trofim Lysenko's rejection of genetic science led to disastrous agricultural policies and widespread famine. Today's anti-vax activism poses a public health risk by encouraging parents to forego immunizations, endangering children with preventable diseases. Those who oppose scientific consensus often fall victim to cognitive biases, such as creating false connections between unrelated events. For instance, some argue that terrorism is linked to climate change, drawing convoluted lines of causality that ignore simpler evidence-based explanations. The problem also extends into ideological beliefs. 
Advocates of unchecked multiculturalism promote the idea that diversity alone strengthens society, ignoring that not all cultural values align with free liberal principles. Such denial can lead to division and conflict rather than the unity that's often envisioned. Denialism also extends to religious ideologies. Despite the number of terrorist acts inspired by specific doctrines, some refuse to link these actions to the ideology behind them. They use euphemisms and excuses, ranging from misinterpretations to historical deflections, to shield these beliefs from criticism instead of facing the difficult reality. When confronted with challenging facts, many people resort to misleading arguments to protect their beliefs. This refusal to acknowledge inconvenient truths in favor of complex narratives shows the grip that denialism has on human thinking. Whether rejecting science or promoting simplistic ideological slogans, this mindset leads to consequences that affect society at large. Chapter 7 How to Seek Truth Through Diverse Evidence and Reasoning What does it take, then, to seek the truth in today's complex world? Many people find this task challenging due to their tendency to cling to familiar beliefs and avoid information that contradicts their views. Often, once a person has formed an opinion, they resist considering alternative perspectives, even in the face of compelling evidence. This resistance is driven by cognitive biases and emotional investment, making the quest for objective understanding difficult. To break through this stubbornness, you need to employ a rigorous method for gathering and synthesizing knowledge from various fields. A powerful way to achieve this is by building networks of cumulative evidence. This approach mirrors the way scientists conduct research, drawing from diverse sources and different types of evidence. By piecing together information from many angles, an argument becomes more robust and harder to dismiss. Darwin's work on evolution is a prime example. He gathered evidence from biology, geology, and anatomy to build an irrefutable case. This method aligns with the principles of the scientific process, where truth is established through empirical research, replication, and critical review. Despite the structured nature of science, even scientists fall prey to biases and motivated reasoning. Scientific breakthroughs often challenge established paradigms, and researchers can be resistant to change. But through continual testing and evidence gathering, superior ideas eventually emerge and gain acceptance. The use of these networks goes beyond science. They can unravel complex societal and ideological issues. For instance, debates around sex differences, social constructs and global cultural patterns can be examined by accumulating evidence across cultures, historical periods and methodologies. The emphasis here is on compiling a breadth of data that confronts opposing viewpoints with undeniable facts. In a world where opinions are easily swayed by emotions and ideologies, the true seeker of knowledge must rely on this approach. Synthesizing diverse pieces of evidence will help you form conclusions that withstand scrutiny even in the face of strong resistance. And ultimately it's this dedication to constructing a well-rounded, evidence-based understanding that leads to genuine insight. Final Summary in this summary to Parasitic Mind by Gad Saad, you've learned about the importance of confronting harmful ideologies, challenging emotional thinking and advocating for intellectual freedom. Saad argues that society needs more people to actively defend core values against the spread of mind viruses that threaten our cultural foundations. So it's now up to you to take a stand. Don't remain silent or assume others will speak out for you. Use your voice, challenge irrationality, and engage in discussions. Your participation is essential in the ongoing defense of truth and reason. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.